what's going on guys vic vp back with another game case arcades video put it in the books we got justin's custom heat versus snow miser build boom shakalaka so i got to give a big shout out to mostly social media this is kind of a message to myself because i have family i have friends that they kind of watch my videos and they kind of laugh at it and they're like who vic let's be real nobody's watching your videos but somehow people are watching the videos people are finding me and this is a perfect example of a customer that found me on instagram on facebook again at vic underscore vp be sure to follow me you'll see all the stories i post a lot now so especially when it comes to arcades you'll see a lot of postings there but this is a perfect example of somebody's watching the videos and people do come and people make the order. So Vic, keep it up, people are watching your videos. So this one goes out to a customer named Justin. I don't really remember where he's coming from, I, I should know, but apparently it's about a 90 minute drive. Um, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, we went through a couple of designs, a couple of ideas, and then he finally landed on this really cool, unique idea of Snow Miser versus Heat Miser. Really cool stuff. I never seen the movie, so I don't really know too much about it, but I've been playing the song pretty repetitively. Now it's cool, this is what's the biggest thing is that it is a custom arcade, so you the customer will let me know what you want. This actually started out as a um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of artwork, and then we kind of switched it up. It wasn't really going as planned, so big shout out to Justin, really being patient. Again, you guys are seeing the house build and all that, said so he was patient, but we finally got it all set and done. And I gotta say, it's pretty cool. I did a couple unique things that I've never done before, and hopefully I pulled it off enough for Justin to like it. But real quick, it's an RK build. You know how I do it. I always shoot a promo video, so check it out. The Heat versus Snow Miser build. First, we'll discuss the cabinet, the artwork itself. So this is gonna be pretty lengthy because the artwork is really cool. I really love it. It's super unique. It's super unique. It's my first, it's my first ever movie cabinet and uh, really cool stuff. We're gonna go in depth with as far as how important it is with image quality and high quality. Then we'll talk about the unique thing about the T molding, and then we'll end it with what's inside and some settings that Justin can work with if he wanted to toy around. So real quick, let's take a closer look at the build itself. Let's real quick admire the artwork. Again, custom artwork made by me on Photoshop. Some of you guys, I've been getting a lot of backlash, especially on the Facebook group of like Arcade One Up. And you guys really didn't understand what I meant on my last video about artwork and they stole my artwork, but forget it. I'm not even gonna get into it. But real quick again, let's just admire the artwork on it. Artwork is a very big deal. It's very important that we do get high resolution files. I'm gonna zoom in on this because 
the hardest thing about this build was it is an old movie it is a classic movie and unfortunately they don't really have high resolution pictures to go with it so Justin, I luckily told him, I said, listen, you got to give me the pictures that you want. This way I could work with it. So let's take a look real quick at the heat miser end of it. This is the left side. Again, really cool. Great idea on his end. Look at this. We have a red and blue size. So really, this is like two RK cabinets coming into one. It really gives a cool effect. Again, I've done a couple of unique things that I normally don't do on build, but hopefully Justin does like it. But real quick again, let's focus on the artwork. As you can see, this is the heat miser side. He told me like he wanted specific lyrics that were said in the song, but check it out real quick. So we have here the 101. This is like he breathes it out from the movie. Um, I'm never really gonna say too much because I didn't see the movie, but he's got like his little misers here. And Justin did want this big picture of his arms up. Real quick though, we could take a look at the wording. Whatever I touch starts to melt in my clutch so it perfectly rides the edge right there and it's cool so the big thing though again the difficult thing is the movie it's not in hd so you might see like you know in all honesty this is a stretched image so it you don't see too much pixelation to be honest i mean i'm trying to get it on camera but it's not too much pixelation it's not a high resolution thing so for example if you look at the lettering i mean lettering though is different clean straight you know fonts and and it's easier it's high resolution meaning it's a font i mean wording is in high resolution but when you type it out you can kind of see the difference between sharpness and then and a kind of a low quality low resolution image but luckily it does work pretty cool stuff there is a background basically if you look carefully this kind of background it is very repetitive so it's actually this image here this is the stock image. You can see the columns here. And basically I was able to cut this piece out. We blow it up and as you can see, it's right behind them here. So this actually was an image. I erased it and basically now he's in front of this part here. So again, artwork is very key. It's very important to get high resolution pictures. Um, basically again, let's take a look at the control panel. You got your misers here, the heat miser side and you got your snow misers here so it's really cool to literally like player against player the big thing i want to show you about resolution is that we get into the marquee the marquee you kind of could possibly see what i'm saying basically the marquee really this picture right here this was actually like heat miser was like right here like face to face with them basically i cut them out and then i basically copied this little hill here blew it up and extended it. So it is a clean, I mean, that's what it is when it comes to artwork and Photoshop. It looks clean. It looks like it was meant to be like that far apart. But the big thing is that just to make a little note again, it's not a big deal, but as you could see, like it does start to get a little fuzzy because this honestly is a stretched image. So again, a little fuzzy. And then as you can see the wording, the lettering is, you know, perfectly crisp and all that. But it's really only in the marquee, but luckily in the night, like in dark, you don't see it. Like it looks awesome. It looks, it looks sick. I'm, I'm really like pleased with it. Um, while I was talking to Justin, I did let him know, hey, listen, you know, we have to, we have a 50-50 chance of the artwork looking good because we are using an old movie and trying to make it work. So luckily we got very lucky. It worked. Let's check out the snow miser side. Look at this. So in the part of the song, he does like, breathe out negative 10 i think there is actually wording in the song again excuse me justin but i don't really know the words words like that but basically we wanted to make sure we copy the same exact kind of format so if you see the side here there's three pictures if you really look carefully and you analyze it, the cabinet the side art is divided into three pictures so there's a bottom a middle and a top same thing on the heat miser side we got a bottom a middle and a top three separate pictures so here we have the 101 so breathing out the number here we have breathing out the negative 10 second image is miser with the little misers i believe it is so that's the snow miser side and then same thing heat miser with the misers then we try to get like a cool like single picture so you got one big single picture and you got one big single picture same thing we do have wording on the side so this is what 
Snow Miser says, whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. So again, really cool. I was trying, I mean, I'll be honest, I did the heat miser side first. So I did want to kind of copy how this was, whatever I touch on the top, but it just wouldn't work. So we had to kind of flip it. So the whatever is here, but really cool, at least for the side art. And I mean, again, cabinet really looks cool. Very unique. I've never done a movie cabinet and Justin goes in the book for my first ever movie cabinet. Obviously we got two players here, so LED buttons with the chrome trim. I did get him the Sanwa sticks. We got red top and a blue top. I love the blue top on this because it really matches like Snow Miser blue. Unfortunately, LEDs is like royal blue. This is like a light blue. My lighting in this house is not good. This is not my house, but the lighting in here is just not that great, but you could see the light blue on that. One cool, unique thing that was a very tough challenge. I did it, kind of kicked myself in the butt with it, but I did it first and I sent Justin this. This was tough. T-molding is very difficult, but if you see what I did here, you basically have two separate color T-moldings meet dead in the middle, and I'm just like very shocked at how I did it. I mean, me, Percy, it is very tough because if you look very carefully, you do see no matter what, that's T-molding. I'm still trying to learn how to get a perfectly straight cut. But on this one here, as you can see, there's a little bit of a nick. You can literally see it like here. Sent the picture to Justin and Justin goes, damn Vic, you know, man, it looks good. Please try to do it for the marquee. So in my story on Instagram, I was gonna do red across, blue across, and it just didn't really make sense. I literally spent about an hour doing the team molding on this and up top, it is a little bit better, and as you can see, there is no grooves. And when I tell you no lie, it was like an hour long. It took an hour. If I could show you like the shavings I had on this desk, there was a lot of shavings. So it's a, I really started here. The ends here is nothing, like the ends are easy to go, but getting a perfectly straight cut to meet, that was a tough challenge, but we did it, Justin. I think it looks phenomenal. I think it looks amazing. So we did a really black cool, cabinet really from awesome Game Room stuff. Solutions. You guys know I always use Game Room Solutions for the cabinets and I always shout them out. So Game Room Solutions providing the cabinet, printing the artworks pre-installed. We did have a little bit of a headache when it came to Game Room Solutions. Um, they accidentally sent me the m wrong marquee. So they sent me like everything. I actually got word because once I opened up the box, the first thing I saw was the marquee. And this was the marquee that was inside of it. And I got into panic mode because Justin was gonna pick this thing up in like the next four days. So this was the marquee that was in the box. I don't like to make fun of people's builds or bu people's art designs. I don't know if somebody did make this themselves or if this is a Game Room Solutions artwork thing, but this is, um, there's a lot going on. It's a cool little thing, but the only thing that really makes me laugh is there is a RetroPie logo then you do have a Nintendo GameCube logo. And then on the top right, you do have a Ryzen 5, which is a PC build logo. So that just threw me off, but whatever. Luckily today, um, it's Friday. Literally Justin's coming down tomorrow to pick this thing up. Game Room Solutions coming in the clutch to fix the mistake. Sends me not only the right marquee, but they also send me another marquee. So there is two of them. This will go to Justin. Maybe he could put this on the wall. I don't know, but they came in the clutch and they gave me the marquee. So that was a little bit of a scare, but let's go now into discussing what's inside the cabinet. So inside this cabinet, we are running a Raspberry Pi. This is a retro Pi, a Raspberry Pi build, 15,000 games, four player setup two arcade sticks and we have two wireless playstation 3 controllers and again there is a raspberry pi build in this led strips going to a slow fade led um, lights connected to the blue on the led strip so anytime it gives off blue you will see the lights on the leds kind of fade in fade out if you look at the back here i try not to unplug anything but if we pull the back without breaking anything without breaking anything you kind of see here, we do have, look at this, red on the door. I did blue on the top, really cool stuff. Big things that I'm trying to get into, especially with a very upcoming build with PC, trying to keep everything very clean, stapled and down. I gotta get a new stapler so that 
these wires stay down without damaging the wire. As you can see, we have our LEDs here, LED controller, volume up here, got the LED um, controller there, subwoofer for down below, got the strip for the power, and our Raspberry Pi is here. I now use a lot of the plastic standoffs. It's a very important thing to do. And we have basically all the wiring guts there. So that's the inside of the cabinet, very clean. Again, I'm getting to the habit of cleaning up our wires, making sure no wires are just everywhere. I now zip tie them and make sure it's all clean. So again, we are running a Raspberry Pi build. I'm gonna shut my lights off because I'm having this glare. There we go. So this right now is in a track mode and I am in right now Super Nintendo wheel. So after 45 seconds, I've lowered my seconds from a minute to 45 seconds. Basically after 45 seconds, it goes into a track mode and shows you all the games that are in this specific wheel. So again, we are in Super Nintendo and it is showing Super Nintendo games. Big thing, real cool thing to see here. It's very important. You, the customer will let me know if you want the screen to be stretched. Do you want it full screen on these games or do you want the games to be what they really are, which is core provided, which usually is a five by four or a four by three. So with that, you will get black bars. I always set them to stretch, but there are some customers that don't like it. I will always shoot you a video on how to change the setting. So that's gonna happen later on in this video for Justin. Basically, if we did wanna play, you just nudge the joystick and then we come back. Big thing I always get, it's really a track mode. There's a lot of stuff going on, but a track mode does have a semi kind of little lag to it. As you can see, it's like, it's like a one to two, like, I don't wanna say milliseconds, but you could kind of see it. The big thing is that when you have the volume up, you will kind of hear the sound stutter. It's just only in a track mode because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of wheel art going on. So basically if we wanted to exit out, your second button here brings you back. Try to think of this forward and back. So I'm going back. If I wanted to, let's just say, pick an item such as consoles, you press the first button, which is your enter button. And then from there, you could pick a console. So for example, here, this is where you could kind of see it. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of stuff going on and you could actually kind of hear it. So check this out. You will hear like that. Brrr. You kind of hear like the static to it. So you kind of hear it. Sounds like, like, a, like a bad speaker. It's just that because it's transitioning from screen to screen. So it only happens there. Um, but real quick, we'll load up a couple arcade games just to show it. I'm now trying to get into the habit of showing different arcade games instead of just doing Street Fighter. But obviously we always do Street Fighter because Street Fighter is the best way to test our buttons. So as you can see, we do have 2200 arcade games. I do have my buttons set to next letter and previous letter. So instead of you holding up on the joystick, you could always just skip to the letter. One button again, our enter button is here. We also have our admin buttons at the bottom. So let the game load. Arcade games always go through this kind of boot sequence. That's how the actual arcade game loaded up. It gives you always like a little warning. Don't do drugs kind of thing. Bump up the volume. Coin buttons at the top. Always like to make sure that both buttons work. Player two. And again, as you can see, we will load up the dynamic duo Ryo versus Ken. This is pretty cool because it's like Heat Miser versus Snow Miser. Always use Street Fighter to test all your buttons to just make sure that they are all working and registering. That is the best way to do it. So you always go down the line. We always go left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. Can we do it? There it is. One handed on Dukens, no cuts on that. On my Instagram feed, I did two of them. I did the second one, okay. That's a third one. Can we do reverse for Ken? I gotta practice that. But as you can see, one hand that I do against our admin controls down here, there is always a shift, save, load, exit. So I could save this state right now, or if I was playing before, I could always load it, which I should have a game. And there you go, I actually did have a game loaded up. I went back to a game that I was actually playing before, and there you have it. So there's a save feature and a load feature. You always have to hold shift, save i just saved it every time you save there is yellow wording here and basically now 
We are now saved and ready to play again if we're getting our butt kicked. Couldn't do a one-handed on that. <laughs> now we're gonna exit out, shift, exit, and we are set.